Happy 2018, Stitchy friends. Welcome to January. I hope that you guys are starting off the year with uh, lots of fun stitching, new starts, maybe some old whips that are getting the dust bunnies shaken off. Uh, I myself have started my very first Chatelaine. I am breaking my Chatelaine virginity um, with the water garden. I'm going to turn you guys around and show you that. I have to admit that I feel very weird not showing you my dragons this month. It is the 3rd of January, so I've been stitching for three days. This is going to be my third session right now. I haven't really started. I just put the thread in. Um, but yeah, this will be my third session. So what you see I'm about to show you is two days worth of stitching. Um, so I'll turn you guys around so you guys can see. So that there is what I have gotten done. Um, all of this blank space here is all going to be beads. That's supposed to be empty. Lots of beads. But I haven't gotten them yet, so mm, they'll just stay like that till I'm ready. So the other thing that I'm working on is my diamond painting, my forest piano. I'm going to take you over there to show you that right away. But I have also started school. I did my first class yesterday. So what I think I'm going to be doing is only going to be concentrating on one project a week. Um, typically I, I do six projects a month, but this time I this year I think I'm only going to do four projects a month plus my diamond painting. Um, but the diamond painting doesn't take a whole lot of time because I'm only doing a little bit of it every day. So it, it, it still counts, but it's not as time intensive as cross stitching is. Um, so yeah, so the first week of course is going to be my Chatelaine. And so I'll take you over there and show you what I've gotten done on uh, the forest piano. So this is the what I've gotten done on it so far. I'm trying to get a there you go a good glimpse of what it is without all the sparkle coming at you, and it kind of looks um, funny not being able to see it. But there we go. I have three more rows, I think. Three more rows, and then I'll be finished page one. Um, but I only do. Well, I did this chunk and this chunk, and then now I'm just doing like rows at a time. Just one row. Well, that's left a day, and that, that's it. So, good afternoon, guys. It is now Thursday, and I have been working on my Chatelaine. Um, it's going a lot easier than I thought it would be. Uh, it seems to be the type of pattern that really works with my brain. It being symmetrical and it being the same on each side at least the top and the bottom and the sides they're exactly the same so once you do one side the other side is exactly the same and that just really feeds my my need to have it symmetrical uh, I'm really enjoying it but I don't want it to go too fast and so I have decided to um, put another project on a QSnap which is an old one which was one I planned on working this month anyway but at the end of the month somebody is bombing me um, and it is this one of course because I want to get That's it finished. That's a big red one mom. That is hey. a totem pole. Yeah. How did you make it? Stitching. Ah. What I'm going to be talking to you to today or right now is about these guys right here which are so I don't mean to be giving you the finger but it's the longest one <laughs> is the Inukshuks. What Inukshuks are and their importance to Canada because it is on the reflections of Canada. So what it says is Inukshuks are a figure made from piled stones. They are man-made boulders constructed to communicate with humans throughout the Arctic. So they are traditionally constructed by the Inuit people, which are up in the Northwest Territories. Um, and they are an integral part of the Inuit culture and are often intertwined and represent Canada and the North. 
The Inukshuk is a shape of a person, signifies safety, hope, and friendship. These stone sculptures are also an important part for navigation and as a point of reference, as a marker for hunting grounds and to do denote a food cache. Um, so yeah, they're found in the Arctic region. Uh, Yukon, Northwest Territories, you know, uh, Nunavut, I don't know. Over, I've never been up there, so I don't really know, but I'm just reading where it says. It's also found in like Alaska as well, uh, which is a part of the United States. Um, but all up there is where you would find these, these Inukshuks. So that is what a uh, Inukshuk is. I will post some pictures from the internet here so that you can see a real Inukshuk. Good morning. It is Saturday and I'm just stitching on my Chatelaine so I thought that I would show you. I have one more small little goal to complete on it before I put it away for the month. So I'm going to turn you guys around Hello. and show you. So this is what I have gotten done. Yeah, and this is where the beans go. Yes, this is where the beans go. And so then I just have to go around here yeah. and then do the exact same thing on the bottom here and then go around here. And then this color will be filled in all around. And then I'm going to put it away for the month. So I will show you guys that. You can hang it up like that. No, it's not that. It's going to get really big. Big? And then, and then I will show you it once I have all that complete and I put it away for the month. Good afternoon, guys. It is now Sunday and I am just finishing up on my Chatelaine uh, for what I'm doing this month, that is. Uh, I finished all the blue in the center and so now next month busy house do you hear splashing do you hear birds do you hear the TV yeah they're going back to school tomorrow um, oh, glare. Ooh. okay so I finished the blue in the middle and so next month I'm gonna be doing the brown around the middle so I'm going to turn you guys around so I can show you properly what I did. So that is what I got done. And all of these blank spaces is beads. So that will forever remain that way until, you know, I get it done and I'm ready to bead. It's a lot of beads. But these are like, hu these are supposed to be huge, huge ones. And then these ones are supposed to be huge ones here. And then the rest are all just little, little seed beads. But, yep, that is what I got done this month on the start of my Chatelaine. My very first one, Water Garden. So I will put that away until next month. Good afternoon, guys. It is Monday. The kids are back in school. Woohoo! So, I'm stitching on my white flower now. I just started stitching on it this afternoon because, of course, I'm in school now. So, I'm trying to devote a part of my day to my schooling and then a part of my day to stitching. Um, I have my first assignment due on Sunday. So, in like basically a week. But it's my first time doing an assignment or doing any kind of writing on a college level or a schooling level since high school, which was like 23 years ago. So it is quite intimidating and uh, I have to do things that I haven't even heard of, such as the different types of formats that are required. But it's a huge learning curve, but I'll figure it out. Um, so I'm probably spending more time on my schooling right now than on my stitching. But once I get the hang of um, writing, get the hang of the formatting, 
uh, and just get the hang of learning again, then uh, hopefully it will go easier. Um, my goal is to get this page finished this month. I plan on working on this for two weeks um, and then maybe a little bit of my um, reflections of Canada when I feel like I need something that is just like one color and I can just go. Um, but for the most part, yeah, just, just this guy. Um, so we'll see, we'll see on a, on a typical month where I'm not going to school, I could probably, I could probably very well accomplish this goal. But, uh, as for the schooling demands, we'll just have to see, cause that has to come first, obviously. So we'll see, but it is a lot of black. A lot of that is black. So it's a lot of uh, chunk chunk stitching. So you never know. We'll, you'll, we'll just have to play it by ear and see what happens. So that is basically, let's just say that's the starting point. The green is what I've managed to do today, which is really not that much. Um, but that's just where we're going to start at for today. And we'll see if I can get this page done or not. Let's hope for the very best. Good morning guys. It is Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? Yeah, it's Tuesday. We're having a snow day because we're getting a blizzard right now. Uh, we're getting 10 to 15 centimeters of snow. How much is that? That much snow? I don't know, and it's blowing. It's blowing snow. I'll give you guys a better peek of what's going on because it's hard to see behind me here. But yeah, the kids are home and uh, it's snowing and it's gonna be snowing all live long day. Yeah. So there we have it. Can you see? Oh. There we have it. And there is Naomi out there by the tractor. She decided she wanted to go out and play. I don't know why. It is freezing out here. It is cold. Oh, there she is there. The dogs are looking for the squirrel. That's what they're doing. But yeah, more of this all day long. I have to go brush our panels. So, like one minute later, after filming that last clip, she comes in. <laughs> I knew that would happen. <laughs> so this is what I've been working on. I am filling in. Yesterday I did some of the black until I had to go to bed. Or maybe it was the day before. I don't remember. Anyway, and now I'm just filling in the gaps for where the black, I mean where the, like, I filled in this. And now I'm just filling in this. And then I'll have to go fill in over here, you know, little by little, we'll get there. Pardon the kids playing slash fighting. It, it, it goes, it comes and goes. <laughs> Good morning, guys. It is Thursday and it is another snow day. Uh, not because it's snowing, but because it's minus 40 and the buses were canceled. So the kids are home, as you can probably hear, and uh, I'm stitching because it's early and it's early. I don't want to do schoolwork right now. Well, my actually my computer's updating, so I'm stitching while it's updating. But I'm going to show you my flower and where it stands. So this is what I have gotten done so far. This is the bottom of the page here. So this is all that I have left. And today is the 11th. I have a calendar with me. So today is the 11th and I still have another week to, to finish, to finish that little bit there. Um, because I'm going to move to the forest 
over here and then I'm gonna work on it until it's finished and then whatever time I have left I'll work on that one which is that's the what I've gotten done so far good morning everybody happy Monday and I know most people don't like Mondays because you know everybody got to go back to work but I like Mondays because the kids go back to school and it has been one long Christmas break they had school last week but they only went to school for two days because of our extreme weather that we have up here so it felt like an extended Christmas break which I don't mind my kids being home but you know when it's minus 40 and and that's with the wind chill uh, when it feels like it's minus 40 outside and your kids are cooped up inside that, it causes for a lot of uh, uh, shenanigans and uh, all sorts of stuff. So they're back to school. Hooray! Uh, I finally get to concentrate on my stitching and my schoolwork. It's hard to do schoolwork when they're home and they're being kids. So yay. So I'm going to show you what I managed to get done so far and what I have left to do. I have one more week on this guy. So I hope to be able to finish this page and maybe make a little smidgen of uh, what am I? I'm losing my words. Do a smidgen of, a, of the other page, you know, just to get ahead a little bit. Um, and I finished a page on my diamond painting, so I'm going to take you over there to show you that as well. So this is what I have left. Obviously, this is the bottom of the page. And so this is what I have left, which is that. Um, it's a lot of black, about maybe 40% of it is all black. And uh, so that's good. And then I think when I'm done that, then I think I will go over here and start this page. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I think this is the page end here, and then the, the third, the final page is just these three rows here. So yeah, I'm gonna go this way, and then I'm gonna go down here and do this. And we'll see how far we get. As for my diamond painting, this is page number one. So I completed that last night. Um, see it's sparkle. So the page neck over here goes into the tree trunk. Where is the picture? There we go. So it goes into. So this is all of, all of this, and the next page goes into the to the trunk right here. So, yeah, um, this is not really, this is not, I, I work on it a little bit, but it's not like it's a huge, a huge priority. I do work on it, but I, what I get done is what I get done. It's just something that I, I'm going to be doing for the next umpteen years, um, when I need something different to do, but one page in under a month pretty good for me especially knowing how confetti heavy that this page was um, some of the things that I like about it is that if you miss like you know when you're doing a certain section and you do all of the one color well if you miss the one color then you got to rethread your needle and do that one little stitch that you missed whereas with the diamond painting you just have to grab that one little tile and pop it right in and it also, you don't have to worry about the traveling of your thread because if you go dot, dot, dot here, and then there's next one is over here, then you know, your thread's not traveling. So it's easier to do cross country and not have to worry about your thread traveling because it's just tile, right? So I do like that aspect of this and uh, I think it's gonna be fabulous. So one more thing that I forgot to mention because I've been busy for the past couple of days is that I have a new start 
I started the really I started the temperature garden from Stitch and Mommy on Etsy and she's of course she's on Instagram and she's on YouTube she's everywhere anyway I started her her um, temperature garden um, I felt compelled to do it because of our crazy wacky temperatures here uh, they fluctuate so much one day it can be like minus five and the next day it's minus 25 and then it's minus 15 and then it's minus two you know it's just like it's crazy so I have the first 10 days done I'm gonna show you my tracking of, of, of everything of how I am doing it so it's in my it's in the plastic but that is what I have done so far um, I have the ground done in, in white because, um, it's winter here and, and the ground is white. So I, I put white with a couple of snow hills and then as the months go on and the snow melts, then, you know, uh, April might be brown and full of mud puddles. So we'll see. Um, and then as the ground turns green, then it will become green and then it'll become deeper green as it gets uh, watered and so it'll the the ground will change color through the the year um, so I'm going to show you guys how I have the thread set up the thread choices and the temperatures that uh, we've been experiencing so far this year so this is the um, fabric it's a 32 count and I'm stitching it over too um, periwinkle mist from Zweigert. That's what this is. This is my uh, recording of my temperatures so far this year. The check marks are what have been stitched, and so I'm going to be recording them every because a petal is or a flower is five days because you get a petal, you get a petal per day. So this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth. And then I have the thread colors here. And the thread colors are, have the, the DMC number and the temperature that they are. So we're nowhere up here right now. <laughs> we'll just ignore that. So we're about here. You can have anything from zero right now to, where have we gone to? Minus 25 so far. Um, I often say that it is minus 40 here, but it's not, the actual temperature is not minus 40. Um, in the mornings, the temperature does get to minus, uh, well, actually it does. In the morning time, the temperature is like minus 39, you know, so, and then with the wind chill, it's like minus 45, but I am recording the temperature high at 4 o'clock p.m. every day and that time of the day is whether it's winter or summer it's the hottest time of the day so it's the warmest temperature it's the actual temperature that it was that day but 4 o'clock is the is the warmest temperature that you will you will get during the day so that's what I'm recording I'm thinking that next year I am going to start recording um, January 1st and I'm going to pay attention every day to what the temperature is and what the wind chill is because you know say here on the 13th it was minus 19 well it didn't feel like minus 19 it felt like minus 30 so what the temperature actually says it is and what it actually feels like when you go outside is two completely different things so next year I think I'm going to do either the, the lows or the temperature with the wind chill. But I would have to track that every day because they don't record what the feel like temperature is on the websites. They just tell you what the temperature is. I hope that that makes sense. And this is my, it goes from reds being very hot we can get into the uh, the plus high 30s in the summertime um, so it goes reds to pinks to oranges to yellows and then when it hits 
zero degrees, I go to blue, and it goes, these are more of the brighter blues, and then I go to the darker purples, and then the dark, darkest blues for these frigid temperatures. And then these are the gre different greens that I will be using in the ground, and that's for the writing. And the white I don't have on here, right? I just grab, grab a white thread and, and go. But that is the temperature garden. I will be doing that for the in my annual. You all know that I have an annual whip that I like to work on throughout the whole year. And that, and that is this puppy right here. And uh, it'll be fun to see how it fluctuates throughout the year. Good afternoon, guys. So it's Wednesday. It is the 16th of Fe it is the 16th of January. I just finished my third flower for the temperature garden, and uh, which goes up to yesterday. So I haven't done today's temperature yet, and I I only wait till I have the temperature for the past five days, and then I do the whole flower. I don't do petal by petal every day. Um, but I'll turn you guys around to show you that and I'll show you this guy that I've been trying to work on. I have Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday to try and finish this page. It doesn't look like much to be done, but it's confetti heavy, so it takes time. Like anything. Yeah. So there is my third flower. There's a little bit, there's a little bit of difference in every day. It's getting warmer and warmer every day. That dark purple is like a minus 25 temperature. Um, then it's 21 and then it's 19, 17 and 19 and 17. This is 17 or 12. No, this is 12. So when I record the next flower, it's going to be all up and way in the yellows because it is plus five right now. So I go from all the way up here, from all the way down here, which is what this color is right here. It's minus, um, it's minus 12. So using this color right here for that guy right there. Um, and then, of course, all of these is gradually purpler, purplier, purplier, and purplier to get colder and colder because we had this is that cold snap that we had. Um, yeah, so let's hope that we stay in the light blues and perhaps the yellows for a little bit. It is only 2.30, so... We'll see what the temperature is at at 4 o'clock. And here is my flower. I am almost on the page. There's just that little bit of stitching that needs to be done. And uh, I hope to be able to get it done. I really do. Um, oh, we'll see. I think for that I'm going to have to leave you on a cliffhanger because... Uh, it is the 16th and the video is probably like half an hour long already. So you will continue to see the white flower at the end of the month's video and see if I finish this page by Saturday. Um, next month, you or next month, at the end of the month's uh, update, you will also see the final presentation of Anaphorus Grew. I'm going to be finishing that at the end of this month and if I have time, if I finish the forest earlier, early and I still have a few days left at the end of the month, I will be working on the Reflections of Canada. So you will see those three projects in the end of the month video. One thing I would like to let you guys know is that the lady who sells the digital magazine, A Gift of Stitching, is going out of business. You can find her shop on Etsy. The Gift of Stitching is the magazine, and it has really awesome patterns in it. Um, I would highly recommend that you go check it out. Uh, she's having a 50% off sale right now. I think it's till the end of this month. So go and pick up your digital magazines 
take all the ones that you want because they're going to be gone at the end of the month and they're not going to be available anymore. And of course we can't share our digital magazines so you got to go pick them up now 50% off. So go get them guys. I thought I would let you know. Thanks to Trisha for letting us all know. I'm sure that you guys have all heard from her video but uh, I myself went and picked up not all of the vid not all of them but I picked up like 2021 20, issues so I have lots of stitching in my future yay so I hope you guys are all having a fantastic January I hope that you are all accomplishing your stitchy goals and if not oh well you just do your best I will see you guys next time thank you so much for watching and keep stitching bye bye